Well, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's amazing that when I forget a little bit here or there in the PowerPoint presentation, i.e. the five-minute countdown, everybody forgets what time it is. We've gotten so conditioned now to watch the TVs to find out when we're supposed to be in our seats. So, uh, well, welcome to worship this morning, this beautiful day that God has gave us. Um, a little wet. Um, I'd try to put my jacket on, but I think I'd have to wring it out first. So uh, <laughs> um, apparently I picked the one of the downpours to come in because um, my pants have finally dried out, but the uh, jacket's nowhere near close. So we'll just go without it this morning. So welcome to worship here at Mount Lebanon and online. I know we've got some friends and family that are still traveling and are not wanting to come out in this uh, beautiful weather that we're having, so we've got our online available to worship. A couple of brief announcements this morning. Don't forget our offering boxes are in the narthex as well as up here at the front of the church. Board of Trustees meeting this Thursday at 6.30, and we'll probably be in the fellowship hall um, just to be able to have room to spread papers out and stuff, um, not bump into each other. Uh, VBS is back. Don't forget about that. David, do you want to talk now while we're Annette or somebody want to talk now? Why? Where'd she go? And we'll have those do dates by then, and uh, there will be one during the week. I, I think we're shooting for a Wednesday and a Saturday. So if your schedule doesn't allow it on a Wednesday, we'll have a Saturday option for you as well. So, And I am a certified safe sanctuaries um, instructor or presenter, so uh, I am able to uh, um, do uh, – they're lit um, – I'm able to do that, so uh, I went through the training uh, during the pandemic. That was one of the things that I said, well, since I'm sitting in my office and can't do a whole lot else, I'll go through the webinars and get certified for that. So uh, so we'll have those, uh, and I'll get those dates to you probably by next week. We'll, we'll uh, settle those dates down. And as part of our VBS, on that Saturday, we will have our ice cream supper, and again, more information will be coming from that, but just give a little heads up to uh, get those ice cream recipes out there and, and dusted off that have been uh, sitting uh, in your Rolodex or in your recipe box for the last couple years. I think I've got it. I think I'm out of slides. Are there any other announcements this morning? Well, then may we enter into a time of worship. May the peace of Christ be with you today and every day. Join me in prayer. Lord, we come to you on this, a day that you have made, even though it is a day of rain in which we need right now, Lord. We come and worship you. We come and want to hear you. We come and want to be part of you. We come in community, for that is how you allowed us to see you in community with others with some of the others that we see in our neighborhoods, some of the others that we see and are interacting with each and every day, Lord. We come to you, Lord. We come to you with our abundance, our abundance in resources as we give to your missions, Lord. We come in abundance of grace as we know we have failed in our lives, Lord. We come to you, Lord, in times of need. But we come each and every time. Lord, be with us.
through our song, through our scripture reading, through our proclamation today and every day, through this worship service, and may it be of and for you. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join us in our opening hymn, number 451 in your hymnals, or on the screen, Be Thou My Vision. Please stand as you are able. Amen. You may be seated. This time I would like to open it up for our family to express their prayers, praises, and uh, updates on situations. Um, I received uh, information from uh, Angie Richardson that Dale Spry, who she had asked for prayers for last week, uh, succumbed to his uh, uh, illness. And so please be in the in prayers for the Spry family and all those that are connected to him. Are there others this morning? What was the first name? Pam. Pam. For Pam Wilson as she endure, continues to endure cancer treatments and um, a trial that she thought she would be able to do is not going to be, she's not able to do. Praise Mr. Wayne's back there. Are there others this morning? Yes. Jennifer Covington as she's finished chemo, now on to radiation and surgery. Yes. Carol Davis Smith as she endures a challenging section of her chapter of her life. Are there others? We had a birthday this week, I'm being told, from behind. We, we sung to her last week. 
Yeah. But it's nice to be acknowledged by your daughter. <laughs> yeah, we did sing. We, we did, didn't we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> we'll let we'll, we'll we'll let that go since it was a couple. It was last week. How about that? Almost got you the one time when when you come. We almost got you. We'll let you go though. Are there others? Let us go to the Lord. Lord, we come to you. We come to you so often with our needs and our wants and our desires, Lord. We know that you will hear those and do whatever is in your power to fulfill those needs, wants, and desires, Lord. But we also need to come to you with your praise, our praises, our joys, our loves, Knowing that we, as your children, can count on you in both the good times and the bad times. Knowing that we can count on you no matter what is happening in our lives. No matter how far off the line we get, Lord, we know that you will bring us back. Lord, we thank you for this. We thank you for all that is happening that is positive in our world. But we also know that so much is happening that is negative in our world. And we know, Lord, that you are in those situations. We know, Lord, that you are in each and every situation that we name, we bring up to you, we bring up in our own hearts, minds, and souls, Lord. We know that you are there. We know that you know more about each and every one of those situations than we could ever know. For we, even going through them, do not know the complete and whole situation, but you do, Lord. Continue to guide us. Continue to give us our mission. Continue to give us what we desire and what we need, Lord. What we desire and what we need to stay on your path, along your line. Be with those who are suffering this week. Be with those who are mourning this week. Be with those that are grieving this week, Lord. We have so much loss in our world right now that we don't often know how to express it. Continually allow us to feel your love, your compassion, and your presence. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the book of Amos, starting in chapter 7, verse 7. And it reads as follows. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of the people of Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate. And the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent, a, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel, and the land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go to, into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and is the temple of the kingdom. And then Amos answered to Amaziah, 
I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and the dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took from me, following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall become a prostitute in the city and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword and your land shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Join us. In our hymn of preparation, Lord, I lift your name on high. We always want to lift the name, name of the Lord on high. What do you see? What do you see? That is our question today, the title today. And yes, it is very vague. Truth be known, I oftentimes pick my title long before I dig deep into the scriptures. And because of this, I sometimes make them a little vague so I can go whatever direction I The Lord leads me. And in this case, it was picked for me. We are in the midst of our prophet series, a series that will last off and on for the next few weeks where we will encounter some prophets and encounter their lives in some very different ways sometimes than we might have seen before. Today we encounter Amos. And our scripture today has kind of three parts. And we're going to center on the first one, the lines the scripture found in 7 through 9. But I don't want to leave out where we find ourselves in other sections. So I want to summarize kind of where we are in the second, really the second third, if that's the right terminology. But we find Amos being called to be a prophet. We find Amos being called into a land and a life of prophethood. And Amos doesn't really see himself as a prophet. Amos sees himself as a sycamore tree pruner and a shepherd of the flock. Amos, though, is told by the Lord that he may and is a prophet. And if he listens to what is being said, the Lord will guide him. If he listens to what is being said, told to him in these moments, the Lord will guide him through this. Now Amos would be considered in this time maybe a second career prophet, for he did have a life before ministry. But also, 
In these words, we hear something that is very important. We hear these words of doubt. We hear these moments in which we can relate to Amos. These moments of doubt in which we, when we hear the Lord speaking to us, also feel, is this really the Lord speaking to me? Or is this another thought that I'm having, another part of my mind? Instead, Amos comes to this realization that it is, in fact, the Lord and follows the Lord. But that's a summary of the second kind of half of our scripture today. But today I want to focus on verses 7 through 9. Let me reread those for you. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. And the high places of Isaac shall be made desolate. And the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. This plumb line that the Lord is describing to Isaac and Isaac, Isaac, Amos. And Amos then sees and reiterates to the Lord, what is this plumb line? We aren't 100% sure because the word that has been translated here as plumb line is only used in this particular set of scriptures. This is the only time in all of the Hebrew scriptures that this particular word is used. So there's been some wonder about what it is that is actually being said. But most of the theologians today have come to an agreement that it is, in fact, probably closest to a plumb line or what we know as a plumb line in our language. And for those of you that don't know what a plumb line is, a plumb line is a piece of basic string, simple string that is used oftentimes in a construction site to build a foundation, to put up a wall that will be hung off of a weight and become a plumb bob to make sure you're going straight up and down or run horizontally so you can ensure that your foundation is on a straight line and you don't have to continually measure from a far fixed point. And see, when we as humans use this, use this plumb line, we're able to make straight things. Think about as a house is being built, there's a line or a driveway is being poured. There's a line that goes down that. Now, we have come quite a ways in technology and a lot of times now lasers are used. But more often than not, a line is still stretched. Because that line, listen to me here, that line can't be broken. When you run a laser beam down a wall, if you, stretch, if you go outside of that laser just a little bit, just a sixteenth of an inch, that laser stops. That laser is broken. That beam is broken and you can no longer use it down the way. But a string line, a plumb line, you can stretch that line all the way out to here and as soon as you release that, it snaps right back into place. And that's what the Lord is telling Amos here. The Lord is telling Amos that we have, each and every one of us, as a child of Israel, has that line set for us in the sand. Has that line set for us in the ground. However you want to put it. And we, as individuals, as children of God, are to walk down that line, to be built on that line. See, when you're working on a foundation, as you go up in the foundation, now granted, around here you only go up a little ways. Some of us that grew up in colder climates, foundations went a lot deeper and up a lot higher. But as you build that foundation up, you move that string line, that plumb line up to ensure you stay straight. And that's what we are given by the Lord. We are given this line 
to ensure we are staying straight on our course. Now, we are also all humans. We are also all individuals that make choices in our lives. We are also all people of this world and of this society. And we all have moments in our time when we might stray a little off that line. We might move that line just a little bit. Or we might move that line all the way so the, the line is unraveling and unbraiding and coming to a point where it's about to snap. I've been way out there. But guess what? We always have that plumb line that comes back to center. We always have that plumb line, and that's what we're talking about here. This plumb line that allows us to get back on our straight and narrow path that the Lord has set forth for us. See, we each individually have our own path. We are all made in the image of God. And when we are made in that image, we are given that path at that time. It's our choice whether we choose to stay on it. And it's our choice whether we choose to move around on it. Some of us have a path that may resemble the Blue Ridge Parkway. Some of, I heard a couple of giggles out there, so you know what I'm talking about. Some of us have that path that has so many twist turns and ups and downs and all undulations that there's no way that our plumb line could even be anywhere close to us. But guess what? It is. It snaps right back. Every one of those turns that we make, it snaps us back to where we're supposed to be. Every one of those undulations in the road, those stories now we have, guess what? That's your testimony now. You've been through that moment in your life. You've seen those troubles. You've seen that way of life. And now you know that you've been brought back. You've been brought back by the Lord. You've been brought back by the grace that our Lord, our God has for each and every one of us. Now we individually go off our own paths, our own lines. We never actually break the line though. But we know individuals that are on those paths that are all twisty and turning, or at least appear to be twisting and turning from the outside. But would you know that a lot of times, those folks that look like they're having the hardest time in the world are actually the closest they've ever been to the Lord? And then though we have those individuals in those situations where they look like they are walking that straight line every single day. But in reality, their road's more twisty and turning than anything that we can ever think of. There isn't a straight section of their road. So we never really see what is actually going on. Only God can see exactly what is going on in each and every one's lives. You know, we oftentimes put on a show for others. We put on a show to make it look like we are walking that straight and narrow path that God has us put on. But in reality, we are stretching that plumb line so far in each direction that we don't even know where the straight line is anymore. But guess what, friends? No matter how far you've stretched that line, no matter where you've stretched it to, I don't care if you've stretched it all the way to California, it will come back and get you back on that straight and narrow when you choose to do so. But it's got to be you that does it. You have got to want that. You have got to feel that. You have got to be that. You have got to want to rebuild your foundation along that line. And faith Allows us to do that. See, we as individuals oftentimes will lose our faith. But the Lord never loses faith in us. Just like the Lord didn't lose the faith in Amos when Amos wanted to run away. He just kept going after Amos. Telling Amos that this is now your job. 
This is now what you are being called to do. This is now what we as a community are going to do. And Amos eventually succumbed to that call. Just like we eventually all succumb to the calls that God has put on us. Now if we can succumb to that call in this time and day when we are so distracted, when we have so much other things that are causing us to push that line this way and that. If we as individual human beings can succumb to that call and get back on that line, then so much is possible in our lives. Think about a situation that you're in, friends are in. Is there a relationship with the Lord there? Because I can bet if there is a relationship with the Lord in those situations, in those tough times, in those situations in which you cannot see how they are continuing on the straight and narrow path, it's the Lord's love and grace that is keeping them there. It's the Lord's love and grace that is allowing them to continue to walk on that line or near that line. It may be slightly shifted. It may be slightly off where it started. But I can guarantee you one thing. The Lord's grace will bring and shift them back. And that's what we have. We have a graceful, loving God that allows us as human beings to be shifted side to side. To take that line and move it just a little bit or just a lot of bit. But each and every time it moves, it comes back. And we are on that line together. We're attached to that line, shifting us each and every day. We are the people of Israel that that plumb line is for. Setting a plumb line amidst the people of Israel. Setting a path, a trajectory for each and every one of us to go down, to live out, and to be the children of the Lord that the Lord inspired us to be. Now with that grace that we have, grace calls us to remove judgment. Grace calls us to be removed from false idols. Grace calls us from being re- calls us to be removed from each and everything that distracts us from staying on that line. But grace also gives us love. Grace gives us a tool that we are enabled to walk that line. Grace allows us as individuals to go further than we ever thought was possible. And grace gives us the moments in our lives where we know we have strayed from the Lord. We know we have not lifted the Lord's name on high. We know we have not done as the Lord has instructed us to do. We have doubted the Lord. We have run from the Lord. We have done whatever it may be in our individual lives to stretch that line as far as we could. But grace lets that line come right back and lets us get right back on that line as soon as we want to. So may we be a grace-filled, loving children of God, may we allow ourselves to not get fixated on staying exactly on that line. For that line can move. The Lord will bring us back. And even though we might have a little bit of a squiggly line, a squiggly line is better than no line at all. So let us praise God. And hear God and feel God and feel the Lord knowing that His grace is enough. Um.
amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now i'm found was Sorry, I forgot to warn you about that. Our gra- His grace is enough. His grace is enough to bring us back to that line that we are supposed to be keep- keeping. His grace is enough to allow us to move that line back and forth. His grace is enough to allow prophets like Amos to hear His word even later in life. So go out. Listen for where you are being called. Listen for what you are being called to do. And listen to see where grace and God have. What God has in store for you and the grace that will be given in order to, for you to pursue that. So go in peace knowing that God's grace will carry us through whatever we are going through. Amen?